What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Ripple Van Winkle is back Saturday night. We got a little Utah, Oregon action going down on the TV as we're making this video. I had to cover this news because we are about to go over mass partnership going on in Latin America. You are going to be blown away and it all ties back to Ripple. You know I'm going to connect the dots. You know I'm going to break it down. Stay tuned and stay with me. Plus, we got some major news about more central banks. Plus, we're going to talk about Vanguard. Oh, you're not going to want to miss any of this. Now, listen, I'm hoping the audio is fixed. I know you're going to let me know in the comments below. I moved the mic back. I adjusted some volume. Hopefully, this said, hopefully it doesn't sound like I'm underwater or even like someone else said. They sound like I was making a video from the bathroom. More specifically, the toilet. That is not the case, folks. Without further ado, let's jump into this thing. Let's head over to Live Coin Watch. What are we seeing as far as price action? Well, not must has changed. Total market cap did creep up a little bit. We're now over $2.7 trillion. I love to see it. The Bitcoin dominance is coming in at 41.16%. Bitcoin sitting at $59,509. It is trying to make a push towards 60,000. 60,000 has been a major resistance point for about for quite some time now. We're trying to get back up above that region. Our beloved XRP is at $1.10. I want to say one thing, one thing only before we move on. I think that once this lawsuit is over, we are really going to see these institutions jump in. And I'm about to go over Vanguard with you and why I think that. And we're going to connect some dots because everything lines up. You know everything that I show you. We connect the dots, we put pieces together, we link all articles with what is currently going on, and we connect everything. That's how we get a clear understanding of where we are and where we are going. So I want to bring this to you from Ant One. This is an old picture presentation that was being done with Vanguard sitting right in the middle. As you can see, Vanguard branches out to Santander, BlackRock, MoneyGram, Accenture, SBI, the CME group, it is all tied. You see SCB and everything is running through RippleNet and XRP. You see Temenos and HSBC. We know Chris Larson has come over from HSBC. We are seeing mass adoption from this slide and I think it is all starting to come together. We move over to this picture. Who is Vanguard? Well, the Vanguard group is an American registered investment advisor based in Pennsylvania of about seven trillion. Yes, you heard me, seven trillion in global assets under management as of January 13th, 2021. It is the largest provider of mutual funds and the second largest provider of exchange traded funds, ETFs. You might've heard that word before in the world after BlackRock. In addition to mutual funds, an ETS Vanguard offers brokered services, variable and fixed annuities, educational counselors, financial planning, asset management, and trust services. So we jump over to Vanguard's website. Here you go. Vanguard is an absolute powerhouse, folks. Personal investors, retirement plans, institutional, financial professionals, the value of ownership. So we come over and we look to, at this next slide. What are we seeing here from XRP Captain? Boom! RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, has worked with Ripple since 2014. So it is confirmed they're going to use Ripple and XRP as a central bank digital currency. Who's the Reserve Bank of England? And what you probably want to notice before we get into this a little bit further. Well, it's only the Central Bank of New Zealand. It was established in 1934 and constituted under the Reserve Bank of New England Act in 1989. The governor... Now, the Reserve Bank is responsible for New Zealand's currency and operating its monetary policy. The biggest thing that I preach when we talk about these central banks and XRP is that the central banks still want to be able to control their monetary policy. And by these central banks building on top of the XRP ledger or on federated sidechain off of the ledger, pretty much Ripple, as we know, has private blockchains for these central banks. They hand them a flash drive. They said, here's the code. Plug in your CBDC and what you want to do with your monetary into this line. And when you're ready to get an on-demand liquidity, you let us know and we will att attach you or connect you to the network. And you'll be able to start sourcing liquidity through ODL. You move over to this. From May of 2016, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. You don't want me to search this for Ripple. 
You don't want me to, but you know I am because what are we about to find right here? It says New Zealand banks typically charge flat rates of around $18 to $30 per transaction for foreign exchange transactions. While disruptors such as PayPal, Google Wallet, or Ripple charge rates between 0 to 4% per transaction. This means relatively small retail transactions will incur lower fees. The lower charges by disruptors represent different revenue models along with potential lower transaction costs as fewer entities are involved. Banks use relationships with international banks to complete cross-border payment. This is referred to as corresponding banking. Let me go down a little bit further. For example, Ripple has developed an open source internet payments protocol that can be used by anyone, similar to SMTP protocol used to resend emails to conduct foreign exchange transfers. Now, let me ask you a question. When you send an email, do you know how it actually works in the background? Do you know what's going on? No. All you care about is you hit send and you know the person on the other side is going to receive your email. This is how Ripple is going to is gonna work on the back end with their internet payments protocol, or we can even say it's the ILP, the interledger protocol. You don't know how the money's getting there, or you don't know what goes on in the background when money's sent. All you know is I send money over to John or Joe Schmo, and he gets the money. Who cares how it goes down? Well, we search the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's website, and what do we find? Well, we find a couple of things related to Ripple. Let's scroll down and look. The one I wanna bring out, now the more the more important one is that the Bank of New Zealand talked about the Bank of England and how they how they were working with Ripple to begin exploring how the interledger protocol can be applied to the real time gross settlement systems. So we know the Bank of England did a bunch of pilots. We know they're a paying customer of Ripple. Well, what's you know what's the what's the connection here between the Bank of England and the Bank of New Zealand? Well, back in November 2015, folks. The memorandum of understanding between the Reserve Bank of New England and the Bank of England in respect to central bank counterparties, aka being friends. Here's the article. Here are them working together. They have a signed deal. This is huge. We know about Ripple's connection to the, the Bank of England, to the Central Bank of England. We know from this tweet that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand have been working with Ripple since 2014. They're both going to be working together on their own federated side chains and connecting into the ILP to move central bank money around. And then we're going to do this from T.O. Bennett, Ripple customer, TerraPay. Just released this article. Let me scroll to the top. Yesterday, November 19th, it says TerraPay strengthens its position in Americas by launching services in Mexico and 15 other Latin American markets. Look at these countries down here. Mexico, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. We know about Ripple's connection in Latin America. We know about the connection, especially into Brazil and how David Schwartz stated a couple of years ago, he thought Brazil would be the next on-demand liquidity corridor. We know about Ripple's connection in the closed door meetings that they have had with the higher ups of Brazil and the central bank over there. And we know about the partnership with TerraPay. So it says TerraPay, a leading global payments infrastructure company, bolstered its operation in LATAM, that's the Latin America region, after successfully launching in the USA and Canada early this year. Today, TerraPay's technology's compliance system and local partners enable their clients to conduct transaction costs effectively and seamlessly on any bank account in the following country. How do you think this is getting done? RippleNet. RippleNet is the answer. That, that is how this is getting done. But we're not done here because we move over to this. Ripple partner, TerraPay, joined forces with Pakistani's bank, Alfala. Why is this so big? Well, we're about to get in now. Let's read this real quick. Partnerships are crucial in the cryptocurrency industry. As they are anywhere else, bank Alfala is partnering with TerraPay. The news is significant as it can have major repercussions for the XRP ecosystem. The new partnership between this global payments infrastructure and the Pakistani bank is crucial for many reasons. First of all, over, overseas Pakistanis can instantly deposit money in any amount in Pakistan. 
This is made possible thanks to TerraPay's partner network. Well, what did I just cover? If you head over to xrpwritenow.com, my web website, make sure you check out the Patreon as well. Sixth largest remittance receiving country in the world just signed a deal with Ripple November 15th, five days ago. In a major boost to the Pakistani payment corridor, Lulu Exchange, a leading financial service provider, United Arab Emirates, has entered into a strategic partnership with Bank Afala, the same bank who just made a deal with TerraPay. The same two, well, the same bank, well, the same two banks, excuse me, who are using RippleNet. Bank of Fall is a leading pack is a leading bank in Pakistan to accelerate and scale cross-border remittance payments from the UAE to Pakistan through the RippleNet platform. And we just found out that TerraPay partnered with them as well. Why do you think? Because of RippleNet, folks. That is how they are sending money so cheaply and in and out of all these countries through all of these central banks. This is actually tremendous news. This is massive news right here. Do not sleep on that. I'm going to leave the video right there. Enjoy your Saturday nights. Check out all the links in the description of this video. Join the Patreon. Get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me. Let's talk. Exit strategy, passive incomes. I have helped so many people earn money in crypto while they are sleeping through these passive income streams. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.